everyone knows that it takes a lot of stuff to have a ceramic studio. Tables, kilns, wheels, etc. Um, and so the Dirty Art Center has a really great ceramic studio and we're able to offer a sort of work exchange with the artists and residents. So in exchange for running the kilns and supervising open studio and independent study, um, they get to utilize the studio as much as they can, as much as they want. Um, firing all their work, there's no limit size limitation as long as it fits in the kiln. Um, and yeah, we're really trying to make it into have more professional opportunities. Um, they do an annual show every year in usually the main gallery at the DAC. Um, and we're gonna have, applications are always kind of rolling. We'll be opening the next applications at, towards the end of summer um, for a fall start. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, I'm happy to chat with you at the end. But I don't wanna take any more time from these lovely folks out there. So. One of you take it away. <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> okay, left or right? Here we go. <laughs> hey, y'all. I want to say thank you so much to the folks who paid for my dinner tonight. That was really special. We went to Kura's. I don't know if y'all know that they go meet up at Kura's. It's fun. I like Kura's a lot. Um, so thank you. Start off with some gratitude. I am Chelsea Baker Staff. Um, so I started, we started together back in... 2023, <laughs> uh, January 2023, as a resident artist at the Dory Art Center. Um, I, of course, I'm a little extra, so I brought some slides to show you about myself and my work kind of before. This was me before I started at the Dory Art Center. Um, I started a little artist collective with me and my friends there, uh, and I started making just like fun stuff. Look at them, doesn't that bring you joy? <laughs> Who doesn't love a hot dog? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I really wanted to like grow my work, so then I applied for this uh, artist in residency program, which I really hope you all will check out after this. Um, and so here's how my work kind of grew while I've been there. I've been exploring um, altars, so I had a show at, uh, in the section of the Doherty Art Center. Um, and one section, I, I made about 50 altars, and I had them on, on the wall and invited people to share anything that connected with them with my work, um, and so it was really special. So I made a lot of altars. Um, I got I really inspired by kind of like organic bases, and then, of course, I still like to be fun, so I made some cocks, <laughs> some Friday cocks. <laughs> um, I like to make stuff that sparks joy, but also, um, my my show was about um, diving into some intergenerational trauma, and that's what the masks are about, um, to kind of explore some feelings around some things that happened in my family um, as masks, because that's, that's a great way to, you know, masks we can use to hide something or explore something more deeply. So I brought some of them here today. Uh, but so that, and I also have a, um, my own little business, uh, Uh Oh by Chelsea is what it's called. Uh, I'm currently selling at the Blue Genie Art Bazaar, so check it out Friday, every weekend in May. You can pick up some of my work there. But uh, that's just a little, I guess I'll just, that's just me. I don't want to, I don't know, I thought, <laughs> I don't want to take over uh, and do my demo, but that's just a little about me. <laughs> 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 no, I'm Veronica Christensen, obviously one of the other residents. Um, I can build basically exclusively. Um, and today I'm going to be talking about undulating shapes. So this is some of my earlier work. You can see these kind of sharp moments where it kind of indents and changes in the shape that we have going on here. So this can translate to both sculptural and functional work. So used it for sculptures like this before, but also use it in vases with these sort of shapes going on. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'll be doing today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.
be demoing um, how to hollow solid points. <laughs> I don't know. Has anyone read this book, The Artist's Way? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So Julia Cameron, um, this book changed my life, and I started it like I started it like ten different times. Right? You got to be ready for it when you pick it up. It's a twelve-week program about um, connecting to your higher creative self. She says we're all creative, and if you think you aren't, you're just blocked. And the way to get unblocked is every morning you have to wake up and journal for three pages straight stream of consciousness. And that allows you to stop saying dumb, mean things to yourself and <laughs> um, not continue to go through those patterns that we sometimes can get into, right? Um, to have those thoughts that repeat over and over and over and over again. So I started my journey um, with this whole kind of show and this mask idea through this book, right? So I wake up every morning and write three pages, stream of consciousness. Also ended up getting sober through this process as well. So my work is very much connected to um, basically healing trauma inside of myself. <laughs> and so that's, that's what these masks represent for me. So for me, it's just about, it's just about what I'm feeling at the moment. And that's how I work. Um, so, but let's let's do it together, right? <laughs> so, let's think about maybe would one person be our shape of the mask? Will somebody draw a shape for us? Thank you. So, I start off with just thinking about shapes of my masks, and also um, I think about what kind of emotion am I wanting to um, highlight. So make it real big. Volunteer. Ooh, uh, 
I would do um, when I would think about making a mask is I would draw it out and then of course I just I found it easy to do to make the masks with slabs I guess I've never made one this way so yeah. thanks for challenging me <laughs> I'm gonna try my best to get to get this shape It's giving, hey Arnold. <laughs> Football head. Yeah. Might not be exactly what you had wanted, but that's okay. All right. And so for me, I also, it was funny during dinner, we were chatting about our creative process. Like, my creative process is so. <clears throat> not I don't like it to be perfect I like it to be a little messy and a little you know well this one is pretty smooth on the back but I think this one really shows like the different things in there I'm not into I'm not into perfection um, when I work so that's how I do it <laughs> that's how I roll because I really think for me um, the creative process is about play so that's when I, I would get some newspaper and think about the mask like that. This is an odd shape. But <laughs> <laughs> and I led this workshop uh, at the Doherty Arts Center recently and it was so funny because one person got their slab and just put it on their face. <laughs> and then we used that. It was really it was fun. <laughs> so honestly um, that's how kind of like I would work, and then I, I'm very inspired by uh, this artist, Carolina Romanowska. I don't know if you follow her on Instagram, um, but I really like, really like her work, and so that's where kind of like, you know, some of these fun uh, textures and patterns and glazes, um, where, that's where they're inspired by. So I'm gonna keep working on this and basically I'm just gonna cut out and maybe push eyes in and stuff like that. But I'm gonna pass it to you, is that okay? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna grab my hair clip because I'm burning up. Yeah. <laughs> but so, yes, right now at least, I'm starting with something a bit more similar to one of these guys where the base is a bit more of an oval shape. So I started with a slab that I kind of just pressed out by hand, not being too particular about it, and then added a coil. And now I'm adding coils to be building inwards, you can see here, I'm starting to get this sort of shape. And so I'll keep accentuating that, building that part, and then filling in. And if I want a negative space, kind of like this middle guy, I'll demonstrate how that goes in a moment. But um, I can put my hair up first. <laughs> And then we'll get to it. <laughs> Is the AC like off in here? <laughs> 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 it's really off. <laughs> it is. Um, yeah, so I use this knife tool all the time to get. So if you see here, this one I've already prepped to be able to clean the slab. And the way that I personally just like to do, there's something wrong with adding it this way. But so as I'm going, I'm going to be putting the edges of things to just prep for the next step, essentially. So I'm going to cut on this side. Much better. Thank you so much. <laughs> I bounce around a bit. This is B mix. Um, I also really like Cinco Rojo as well uh -huh. and Buffalo Wallow. Buffalo Wallow is a bit, at least the bags that I have gotten, have tended to be a bit softer, which is great for a lot of things, but for something where I'm wanting a lot of these undulations, it's kind of tricky to work with. Unless you have something like a heat gun with you, which also helps to like 
I'll probably demonstrate that in a moment where as I'm getting ready for a big transition, you don't you want to make sure the clay is stiff enough to be able to handle that. And additionally with that, there's the moisture content piece as well as the thickness aspect of the clay. Um, so yes, I'll talk about that as I go along. But to answer your question, <laughs> Cinco Rojo and Phoenix are the two main ones that I use. And then Buffalo Wallow, this guy's Buffalo Wallow. Um, but so this is kind of a, I think of it as kind of freestyle coil building a little bit, because I'll have like just a little coil that I add here and a little guy there rather than the full thing because the different, the variety of shapes that I'm going for. So I'm gonna add coils here. We'll take this little guy. I tend to uh, pre-roll my coils in past studios. People thought that's really weird, but I feel like it's probably the most efficient way to go about it. I don't know why you would do them one at a time, but <laughs> um, I tend to flatten them just with my hands like this on the table to get them prepped more into the position of the way that I'm wanting. So I'm just casually pat that a few times. And I love this nice scoring yep. tool that we all like. It's like a little witch's broom or a fork, <laughs> whichever you prefer. Love it. Um, this too. So as I'm pinching, I'm bearing in mind the direction I want to take it in. So you're kind of coaxing the clay either in or out, depending on what you're wanting. So here it's a little tough to see, but I'm pinching in this motion where I'm not pinching so tight that I'm touching my fingers together, but just enough to move the material in a kind of consistent way in one direction. So I'm pinching it inwards right here, as if I'm working towards closing it up, but I'm not gonna close it up. And then I personally like leaving my finger marks and texture on things, because if I'm gonna go through all this effort to hand build something, I want you to know that's the way I did it. Um, but so back to this nice little coil that's been flattened out for us. <laughs> Cut that in half this time. Fill up in this floor. And this clay is a tiny bit drier today than I brought also a sinker with me, which was really wet, but again, because of not wanting it to slump on itself. And I could use the heat gun, but I like to not need to use it so much. This is a good consistency for me today. Can you move your big pot? I use sometimes it, right now I'm just using water, but I'll put a little bit of vinegar in my water and often mix that. And then I'll also often use a little bit of the clay body that I'm using to make it just partly slip, partly vinegar, and partly water all together. Yeah. And what does the vinegar do? The vinegar, kind of, some people, I don't know if this is like a universally held truth. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, this might be just like a bit of a strange rumor, but um, they say it helps keep things a bit more plastic and kind of help things bind to be a bit level of acidity or whatever. I don't know. I picked it up in college and I've just stuck to it because it feels like it does something, but I'm not entirely sure that it does. Other than like maybe really I dry feel like that's here. everybody's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it, yeah. It, it works? Yeah. So I, just, like, I don't know. My hands also get really dry as a result, I think, but so just bear in mind. Oh, you know, you've been warm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, if you like the smell of vinegar, it's nice too. Sure. I don't know if that's just something you're into or not. It's a type of vinegar. Yeah. <laughs> adding edge to edge here. <laughs> and then you're gonna use this room to kind of smooth out that bond. I'll go back with my finger as well. But just getting those two pieces to kind of homogenize, if that's the term you wanna use. Seems a little more sciencey than is necessary maybe, but we'll stick with it. And then, so often in these kind of, where it's turning, you're kind of using your mind's eye a bit of just sensing with your fingers how far everything is to make sure, make sure you're consistent. Cause you want a nice consistent thickness for even dryness. Um, which is what's going on right now. Hard for you to see, but you can take my word for it at least. Um, and 
this is where in this stage I'm going to start to turn upward actually on this particular side where I'm going to pinch in and then I have really intense hitchhiker's thumbs. I actually think it helps me a lot personally but just to forewarn you this is what they look like. It's actually really helpful in my process, not gonna lie, but <laughs> um, it's nice. It's like this perfect little yeah. measurement. That's the that's the degree I want to change it. So I'm gonna just take my thumb and pull that back, just like that. <laughs> um, I'm starting to turn. You can see so this little little bit starting to turn here. So I'm gonna keep adding on to that with more coils, which you've seen a little bit of. Already. So I'm actually going to transition over to Diane if she's ready to chat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So before I start cutting away, um, I want to talk a little bit about like, why I choose this particular method. Um, of building, okay. I wanted to talk a little bit about why I choose this particular method of building solids. And I think it's because when like coil building, pinching, and all these other ways, typically are for building continuous forms. Um, and so when sculpting a more complex form, or when trying to figure out a form that you don't even know, I find it really helpful to build solids. But of course the problem is that that's like a giant block, and you can't pick up and you know, you get a hollow. Um, and I think the advantage to this process is that you can sort of sculpt additively and subtractively, as you go along. Um, typically I don't, I mean it sort of, like, sort of depends on everyone's process, but typically I don't finish like the complete every single detail before I go in because cutting and reassembling will sort of warp the piece slightly. So I sort of get to a point where I have most of my main details, I have like my main like, since I make a lot of figures, I have the main pose figured out. And so from here, what I'll decide is where to cut. Um, any area that's over uh, maybe like three quarters of an inch, I don't want to be hollow. And when you're making cuts hollow, what you want to be aware of is to make your cuts as horizontally as possible. And that's because when you reassemble, you want gravity on your side as it comes to you. Because if it's a vertical cut, if it's a complete 90 degree cut, the pieces will want to like not come together. And so if it's inevitable, um, try to make as angled as a cut as possible, or as close to just zero. And so typically I like to start with the legs and then move on to the body. Um, but as I'm working, I also want to be aware of which tools I'm using because that sort of dictates the limitations of how deep I can go. Um, like if I made a hole, or if I was carving through a piece, I was very narrow and very tall. I could only go like this, it'd be really awkward. And so I'm comfortable holding my tool here, and so I'll cut pieces that are maybe about this tall. Especially because these are really small, fairly small words. If it was a larger piece, um, I wouldn't worry about this whole uh, the length of the piece because it would be a wider. And so I'm going to just cut the legs off. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do to you? <laughs> um, as you are cutting pieces off, um, you want to have typically sponges would be nice. I forgot to bring some, but I have them. anywhere to set down. Um, no, it's okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so some right there. I was going to use this bubble wrap today, so I think you okay? Yeah, good. Okay. But because as you are cutting all these pieces apart, you want your pieces to be as supported as possible. Not a wet sponge so that it doesn't like melt away and whatnot mm -hmm. again. Um, so because it's going to be, because if you put it in a spot where it can't support itself, um, your pieces will work away as you're working.
look at to inspire you for the characters? And the, the characters that you're sculpting are very wonderful to look at. Uh, of which are you looking at certain pictures or certain like memories? Or you like the people. I like to people watch. <laughs> <laughs> I look at you all. Um, I do, I, do I, I sort of as like a habitual practice, I like to draw people from life a lot, not necessarily in like class settings, but just on the go, on the bus, on the street. And I think I'm really interested in how people naturally situate themselves in spaces, like which people take up the center of the room, which people lean against the wall, and like how people naturally find their own spaces and within those spaces their own their own poses. Like, you know, because I think if you watch people that you know very well, you know that they like to lean on this leg or they like to sit in this particular pose. And so I like to find those sort of patterns. And I think that sort of carries over into the sculptures that I make. started chopping uh, so you cut off at the legs um, but I you had said you like to cut in four to five you know this much at a time because of your tool right um, why didn't you start from the top down and cut at first to that top section why did you start at the bottom well, I kind of like to rebuild my sculptures from the bottom up okay so I will um, it sort of depends on each different one but as I'm going on, um, I won't necessarily reattach the legs right after this. I'll probably make oh. another cut, and then that way I can sort of work at this side, and then from the other side, and then when it feels sturdy enough, I'll start to pe put pieces together and areas that are complete. And then I'll probably go for maybe the arms are 45, um, the wrists, and the fingers are thin enough that I will leave them alone. If they're really chunky wrists, maybe um, I will take like a middle tool and poke a hole just to remove some tension. But maybe not necessarily try to carve it out. Thank you. Yeah. I will just be carving away at the legs <laughs> for the time being. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
advantage to having it look like you had repeats of your designs happening there um so it looks like you know you've got your repeats is yeah. that intentional because you can isolate certain parts yeah okay so yeah, you're making so the most of your media right got it so i just had one
really through the screen. You don't want to be too thin, it'll like leak out on your beak. So trial and error. Yeah. So I added some underglaze, like a half and half mm -hmm. mixture, and messed with it. So it's kind of sticking. So it's not too ready. This is all new to me. So that, that blue material yeah. is what you get after you expose it to the sun mm -hmm. and wash it away. Yeah. And where it's clear, is it so porous you, or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the screen, if you want to, um, it's like a, screen. Like a stencil. Uh -huh. It's yeah. like oh. a self-screen. Oh. Yeah, so the blue oh. is the resist and the yes. clear area has screen. Oh, Yeah, so whatever okay. is black on here right. will be what is the ink yeah. for underglaze can pass through onto the clay. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I have a project in mind using film negatives. detailed of an image have you worked with? Like, Well, yeah, you'll be able to see a little bit of the screen that gets passed through. So some of these have like whiskers and little eye, fine details around the eyes, and it sort of varies depending on how accurate you are with your timing. Yeah. So if you leave it in the sun too long, it'll burn more get away, and it won't be as fine. If you don't do it enough, then it won't develop enough, and you won't get anything. To come mm -hmm. So it is very much about like time and place also. So that is part of the eventual project that I was kind of thinking about. It's like yeah. using the time and the season of the place, and even kind of use the clay from the place, the images of the place to make the thing, to put on the thing, very meta. <laughs> it's just my cat. <laughs> <laughs> because he, has, he is everything. Uh, his name is Pasta. Uh, it means cat in Swahili. <laughs> some more it's okay uh, so you know my takeaway for y'all is just to try something new think outside the box um, go with the flow and so I'm gonna come around with a handful of random things I found in my toolbox and I want you to think 
use it to add to this. Okay, and think about, and let's say, let's say I give you a knife, okay? Try to, let's think outside the box and not use it to cut. <laughs> use, use a different part um, to add to this, okay? That's what I'm constantly doing. I'm constantly using my tools in ways they're not supposed, or whatever, whatever's supposed. Okay. <laughs> Good job. 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 Good job.
And it's there's more things in here than just the morning pages, right? Um, she says every week you should take yourself on an artist date, which could be a walk, which could be go to a museum, could be take a class, you know, could be call a friend that you haven't talked to in a long time. So there's an artist date, um, the morning pages, and then there's reflections, questions um, at the end of each chapter. So I'll pass this around too. Thank you. <laughs> Sometimes I plan these out, sometimes we just see what's supposed to happen, and we're doing a lot today. So we're going to see what's supposed to happen. I think there's going to be like two or three of these smaller guys, and then we'll figure out what we want to do. Sometimes you can build this way, but use like foam. I don't have like a lot of foam with you, but if you kind of try to support it as it dries too, uh, that can be cool. Do you ever fill it with um, newspaper or whatever, like uh, material you know will burn off? Yeah, yeah, great question. Uh, the very first ones that I did, it works like that. And then I found that I preferred being able to manipulate the shape more than I was able to, or at least I personally found like it seems to work great for some people. Everyone's hands are different. There's not one right way to do something. Not everybody is uh, genetically yeah. enhanced. <laughs> <laughs> I need them all to be my <laughs> 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 but, yeah. Right, I also used, uh, sometimes, and this was good for making the cloud-like forms specifically. I got literally just like tights, like pantyhose and stuff that with uh, newspaper, newspaper, and then have this kind of general shape going, and then put a slab over that, and you leave a hole in the back so you can just pull all that stuff out at the end after it dries. I really ambitiously tried that with porcelain the first time I did it, and it, it, it was okay, you know? <laughs> it had some kind of, it became really organic, but sometimes it's what you want, so it was good. <laughs> um, but, I didn't hear what you said. Did you say you had the shape in mind before? Or you so yeah, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, and today I'm just seeing what it wants to be. Uh, but yeah, oftentimes I'll draw out different blobs, for lack of a better phrase, and then find a sort of shape that speaks to me. And then generally from there, it ends up evolving on its own a little bit, where I'll have like the general idea laid out as I start out, and then as I'm looking at it and seeing that it wants to be a little bit different. There's a kind of this interesting back and forth with clay, mm -hmm. as working clay, I'm sure you all know. Sometimes it tells you what it wants to be, so.
of underglaze, you can just try and try and try again, in theory, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you can actually just like wipe this off and yeah. try it again. Yeah. I yes. think my issue is that I don't really work with slabs, I don't really make things out of slabs, so I just have a bunch of slabs with stuff, so I probably just recycle this clay and make some weird pinchy things, like this is very textured, and it is kind of the shape and stuff that I'm making now, and I tried to do the jelly on it, and it's just like very warped and weird, which could be cool depending on the image that I'm using, but you can't really tell what it is. Mm -hmm. Do you really have to move that space to the medium? Oh, this? Yes. 
maybe put a piece of foam under the gel plate, and then that way it will conform. Yeah, mm -hmm. as you're going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had that yeah. thought when I was like, oh, it's too flat. <laughs> so let's experiment. Because it is kind of a strange thing, it used to be. But it's fun. It's fun to mess around with and layer images and see if you wanted to do some screen printing and some graffito and like put more details in. Mm -hmm. you, you can do a whole lot of really cool stuff. Have you ever tried it with um, wax resist as the printing liquid? Oh. Or latex no. with the printing liquid? No, but I'm good to it down. Yeah. <laughs> Those are good ideas. Tissue paper, green print onto the really jelly, have... onto the tissue paper, sure. onto that wax. Can do that. I was going to say, I heard Shelly say the tissue paper, and I used to print before you could commercially get the, the transfer papers, and but on Bisquare. Yeah, right, like these are... Because it's much more is. absorbent, and it's yeah. it, you're not gonna mess up any other layers that are on there. Mm. Yeah, so that's also another consideration, like just obviously greenware, you can wipe it off, you can do whatever. Bisquare might be harder to get that off. You've gotta let it sit for too long. Probably won't ever come off, because it's okay, because it's too broken anyway. <laughs> There's uh, recipes for making your own jelly pill, too. Mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. It's, let's see, if I remember, oh, alcohol, mm -hmm. jello, hot water, glycerin. And you take a, um, a baking sheet, and you have to give it at least a week to set up. The longer, the better. <laughs> so Amico just launched the line of anything with an of ink, ink. underglazing. Oh, nice. I, I saw that recently for you. I was like, who is that? I just looked up my phone and it was
that's a cool you're kind of committed but not like entirely committed to the shape that you created before which is nice you can edit as you go along and you can always start stuff too that's another way to go about it as well um, so what's going on over here how about you Chelsea <laughs> <laughs> I guess lastly would be like I started you know I had never made a mask before so all of mine for the show basically I had fun little ears and then I cut out holes right behind them to put the wire in so they hang. And so sometimes I didn't get it quite right. And so I ended up getting a little piece of foam when it's hanging on the wall and I'd put it under the chin. And so it would just like lift it up a little bit. So if you do make a mask, that's probably something, and I've never done one like this, so awesome. good job y'all. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I would just guess, debate our beautiful mask. Nice. Yes. Uh, Maybe here? Here and here? For the yeah. holes? Yeah, right below the ears. Okay. So that's what awesome. we'll do. <laughs> what? I said you still may need a piece of foam now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. Jump to start. So we'll see. And I notice you use um, underlays for these brighter masks that are in the front. Are you do the, the, are you doing that on greenware more than you are on bisqueware, or what? At what process do you feel like you begin to add the color? So actually, so uh, so like these. This is um this is a glaze. This is a oh, no six way. a comb six glaze, and then this is a low fire. This is a low fire glaze. Right on. So I didn't do um. Any underglaze. I would like to experiment with some underglaze stuff because that uh, um, Carolina, she does a lot of underglaze. Oh yeah, and fun carving things and stuff. But so I have. <laughs> So the program can be up to two years. Yeah. And you're coming up on that. I know Veronica's finishing up. What what are what are both of your plans as you're kinda finishing? Run some tests. <laughs> <laughs> well I have easy access right now. Um, yeah, in terms of are you saying while I'm or finishing or both, how you're gonna kinda wrap up and then yeah. where you're going from afterwards. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> Definitely, again, running some tests. <laughs> I'm putting some things in the kiln, seeing it turn out. I've been experimenting more with surface decoration recently, so I have a few pieces of that that I'm eager to find. And then, insofar as next steps, so we're moving to Dallas and I'm hoping to get into teaching there. So, I'm that's the, the kind of plan. There's lots of different studios in Dallas, so I feel hopeful that there's some good clay community there too. Uh, but I'm definitely sad to be leaving Austin for sure. I um, I will go until February of 2025, <laughs> uh, and so I'll hopefully get another show in the DAC. So working on, I think I'm gonna explore more um, food uh, stuff, <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> it, yeah, <laughs> with paintings I think of kitchen tables. I don't know, that's what I'm into right now. Um, but 
what I keep writing about for my next step is I have I have lots of friends who own small businesses. My friend Chiai owns Okasan Vintage. I sell my work there as well. Um, my friend Sarah owns Eden House Botanicals and things like that. So I'm really inspired by them. So I would like to start my own store, um, retail store. So if anybody else is interested, uh, <laughs> that is the goal is eventually to have my own store where I sell artwork of great people. <laughs> from both sides, I can get through sort of like a pair of trunks, but get every corner. And if there's um, like folds of clothing, I'll go in and try to get those on as clean as possible. I use a variety of tools to clean up all the edges. Um, you store it in the I mean, I know the outer edges you do not but you don't do any scoring or anything? Um, I can use like a score when I put it all together. Do you? Yes. And I usually like to add a little coil sometimes. I also like to use um, this reassembling stage as an opportunity to sort of lengthen or shorten areas. Especially if I make legs too long, I can cut off a little. If I make the bottom and taller, I can build it up with more coils. Um, one more thing about cutting is that if you want to incise a certain area, um, again, a while I was making a lot of sort of 
sort of the whole series of work about people who are traveling, which is why, hence the backpacks, and what was, there was another body of work where people were carrying letters, and I was carrying letters and baggage, and that was all about um, sort of carrying languages across borders and things. Um, but I think, I think that I've sort of arrived at this form because I find it to be sort of blank, but also friendly enough to make it approachable. I don't want my art to feel like too um, unreachable in terms of understanding that. I feel like when you see a little face, you're like, oh, it's a person. And then you like establish a connection. Because we're always, it's like the human brain is wired to like find faces, find other humans. And so I feel like this is an easy gateway to then usually finish your work? I see the little finished piece. Is it like, is it underglaze? Is it? This was just black underglaze on mm -hmm. terracotta. Mm -hmm. I, use, I do use a lot of underglazes. Lately I've been using stoneware so I have like a light base and variety of underglazes. Um, I'm trying to move into more glazes. I'm terrified of glazes, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to, so I have some figures right now that I will hopefully dump in not dump, but like paint different layers. Mm -hmm. I have um, some glazes that I've worked with in the past that are like sort of satin matte. Mm -hmm. I like I like my matte. I like the dry, dusty finish. Did we did we finish the? Oh yeah, we put the holes in it. I think he's <laughs> All right. Does anybody else have any questions for me? All right. Well, thank you guys. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, our next meeting is uh, um, 